Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Shadow Ball Knocked Owl in the Great League. With the start of Season 10, Knocked Owl can now learn Shadow Ball, which gives it a nice coverage move, especially for Steel types. I was able to play a few sets with it in the Open Great League, and I was very impressed. Its natural bulk, combined with its new coverage, makes it a force to be reckoned with in the Great League. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's take a look at Shadow Ball Knocked Owl in the Great League. Hopping into the first match, we are leading Defense Deoxys into Altaria. As you can see, the team we're running, we have Defense Deoxys on the lead, Alolan Ninetales as our safe switch to bait out their Steel type, and then we have Knocked Owl as our closer in the back. Unfortunately, we don't have Rock Slide. We're running Psycho Boost and then Thunderbolt for the Azumarill coverage, but we will be able to do some nice damage with the Psycho Boost. And now we bring in Alolan Ninetales and the opponent counter switches into a Scrafty. Now Scrafty is not a fabulous response as we can bluff the Dazzling Gleam and hopefully force a shield. We are going for the Weather Ball Bait and they shield, that is very good. Now we're farming up. They're not gonna be able to take us out with this power up punch, so we will reach the Dazzling Gleam. So they have the choice. If they want switch, they're gonna have to give up both shields. Going for the Dazzling Gleam, it lands, double super effective, that takes out Scrafty, and in comes Venusaur. So they are very weak to Alolan Ninetales. They do decide to shield up the Venusaur and farm down, but we have Knocked Owl, and two shielded Knocked Owl is definitely going to win the match, and that is a good game. Hopping into the next match, we have Defense Deoxys into Venusaur. We have two better responses in the back, so I'm just going to throw a Psycho Boost to hopefully force a shield or get some nice chip damage, and then we're going to safe switch. We're able to get the shield, which is very nice, and now we're going to bring in the Ninetales. I do have to respect a potential Sludge Bomb, just a Frenzy Plant, and then they bring in Galarian Stunfisk. Now this is a pretty common pairing, Venusaur and Galarian Stunfisk. So being able to bait out the Stunfisk is big. So that way my Knocked Owl won't have to face it in the back. Knocked Owl having Shadow Ball, I can hit it for neutral, but still not a great matchup, a Flyer versus a Steel. We are going for another Weather Ball and able to put in some solid work versus the Stunfisk. And Stunfisk is going to throw the Rock Slide to take us out which is totally fine by me, as we will bring in the Defense Deoxys and commit to the farm down. And Defense Deoxys will leave with a lot of energy here. We will have to tank the Earthquake, but Venusaur did not leave with a move, so if they come back in with the Venusaur, then we will be able to threaten them quite a bit with a Psycho Boost, and they do bring back in Venusaur. We are going for the Psycho Boost. This will be doing a nice chunk. We force the shield, we bring in Knocked Owl, and it's Swampert in the back. Now this should be a pretty good situation for us here because Knocked Owl is, as I mentioned earlier, surprisingly bulky. And you know, Hydro Cannons from Swampert hit hard, but watch Knocked Owl. Knocked Owl tanks the Hydro Cannon. It doesn't even do half health. We don't even have to shield here. We can actually tank the second Hydro Cannon. Knocked Owl will go in absolutely beast mode. I don't want to use the shield, so I'm going to throw the Sky Attack to take them out. They come back in with the Venusaur. Venusaur gets to a move, but I don't think they can Vine Whip me down. So I'm going to shield, and we're going to commit here. Going for the Sky Attack. Knocked Owl, so bulky, able to survive. Getting off the Sky Attack that takes out the Venusaur, and that is a good game. All right, hopping into the next match, we have Defense Deoxys into Swampert. Now, this is more of a neutral lead, so I'm just going to get some chip with the Psycho Boost, and then we're going to save switch. Again, we have to check for a Steel type in the back. We land it. That does nice damage. We bring in the Ninetales, and they counter switch with Drapion. Drapion does have access to Sludge Bomb, and Sludge Bomb does a ton of damage to Ninetales. I shield it up, and it is the Sludge Bomb. I'm going to over farm in bait. Hoping to see if we can possibly get a shield with the Weather Ball. No shield there, so I am going to throw again after throwing one more Powder Snow. So that way, we can force a shield if they want to get off another Sludge Bomb. Now, they are going to be throwing another one here. I'm not expecting a bait, so I shield up. It is the Sludge Bomb. That's unfortunate. And here, I could have overfarmed slightly more. Bit of a misplay on my end, and we're able to take them out. And they have Talon Flame in the back, which is a very scary proposition. Here I go for the Weather Ball. I probably should have switched instantly into the Defense Deoxys because now there's nothing to prevent me from getting Brave Birded. 
Brave Bird comes through, that does huge damage, and Swampert has residual energy. Swampert, throwing before I can get to the Psycho Boost, very nicely done by the opponent, and now this is going to be a very tall task, as Swampert does have a lot of energy. My only chance is I need to try and farm down before they reach three Hydro Cannons. They've thrown the first, this is Hydro Cannon number two, and my Switch Clock is not up yet. I would need to catch, and my clock isn't up. They would have been able to get to a third, so I'm forced to throw the Sky Attack. Things are not looking great here. They bring back in the Talonflame. We reach the Sky Attack, but unfortunately, Alolan Ninetales is out of energy. They shield up. We come back into the Ninetales. They're going to go for the Flame Charge, and unfortunately, just misplays abound in this match, and we are going to concede the match. So a bit of an unfortunate one there. I felt like it was winnable, but just not quite in the cards. Hopping into the next match. Into a Wigglytuff lead. Again, this is a pretty neutral lead for us. I'm going to farm up, and we're actually going straight Thunderbolt here. Thunderbolt will do a nice chunk of damage onto the Wigglytuff, and now we're going to save switch into the Alolan Ninetales, and we're able to reach the Weather Ball. This will definitely force a shield. Wigglytuff will want to get off their energy, which they do, but I can very safely shield back. Oh, it's just an Ice Beam there. That's a bit unfortunate. And now they come in with Umbreon. And bringing Umbreon into Alolan Ninetales, even when it's running Powder Snow, is a risky proposition. The reason being is the Dazzling Gleam can definitely hurt. We go for the Gleam, and it's shielded. And you know what? I really want to land the Gleam, and I think I can get there. So we're going to shield this up. They're just going to foul play here, and it's going to be a race. Alolan Ninetales able to reach the Gleam. This will be doing huge damage onto the Umbreon. That is very, very nice. And from here, I'm thinking I'm probably going to tank the energy onto Noctowl. Again, Noctowl is a very, very bulky Pokemon, so we can safely tank a foul play. Not too worried about that. They bring back in Wigglytuff. I'm not going to throw. I'm just going to wing attack them down. They bring back in Umbreon. Umbreon gets wing attack down as well, and they have Swampert in the back. And from here, we are in a really good spot. Going for the Sky Attack. And now we're going for the Shadow Ball. As Shadow Ball does do slightly more, even though it is less efficient. We land that. And the Invisible Wing Attack ends up killing them. And that is a good game. All right, hopping into the next match. Ooh, that's a tough lead. Defense Deoxys into Gengar. Definitely not what you want to see. But again, day one, you're a lot more likely to see Spice. So we're going to save switch into the Alolan Ninetales. We get the shield, which is very nice. And here... I'm expecting the Gengar to bait. Lots of Gengars bait. This one is no exception. We are going to be going for another Weather Ball, which would be doing a nice chunk of damage onto that Gengar. But they made an amazing catch onto the Azumarill. Absolutely beautiful catch. The Alolan Ninetales is not done. Able to get to a Dazzling Gleam, which will be doing a nice chunk of damage to the Azumarill. Azumarill is absolutely loaded, but we have two very bulky Pokemon on this team, and we're going to bring in Defense Deoxys, so that way they can't hit me for super effective Ice Beams like they could on Noctowl. Those are only going to be neutral, which is honestly not too terrible. And again, even though they get to a second move, Defense Deoxys is an absolute tank. Hydro Pump, no problem. We will happily tank that one. We are farming up a ton. My goal is to leave with a Psycho Boost in case the Gengar comes back. We throw the Thunderbolt, and they switch in Scrafty. I blind through the Psycho Boost there. We'll do a solid chunk of damage. Now we bring in Noctowl, and back in comes the Gengar. I do have to fear a potential Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb would do a lot of damage. I shield up, and they baited me. That is very rough, but you know what? I'm not going to get Sludge Bomb. Gengar has a very high attack stat. We shield up. That one is the Sludge Bomb. We are going to be able to very comfortably farm down. And now we have two Sky Attacks, so we are going to be able to land one on the Scrafty. They let the first one through, and at this point, we can just farm down. And that is a good game. Again, once we're able to bait out their best response to a Noctowl, Noctowl has a ton of play in the back. And hopping into the next match very nicely. The opponent saves switches to Disableye. And we have a pretty good response in Noctowl. Noctowl, with its normal subtyping, is going to be double resisting the Shadow Claws. And we're able to fire back with the Sky Attack. We're able to force a shield. That is very nice. 
and honestly, Sableye not being able to exert fast move pressure makes this a pretty nice matchup for Noctowl. I do shield up, as a return would be slightly scary from this range, but we should be able to tank the foul play. We do tank the foul play, and again, Sableye not being able to exert fast move pressure on Noctowl is so nice. They shield up, and you know what? We're gonna win switch advantage and shield advantage. So Sableye falling to the might of Noctowl. Empoleon farms us down, but we do still have our defense Deoxys. I'm expecting them to try and catch. They throw one beforehand, and here I'm gonna watch for the catch. And they bring in Mandibuzz. I'm gonna bank the Thunderbolt, and now we bring in the Alolan Ninetales. And from here, unfortunately, since we did win Switch, it's basically just a game of rock, paper, scissors. We go for the Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam, almost one shots. We can safely tank an Aerial Ace and farm down. And from here, with the loaded Thunderbolt and a shield, this game is over. The Empoleon's still staying in, but you know what? Empoleon in the Great League is not tanky. We're going for the Gleam. Dazzling Gleam almost takes out the Empoleon, and Alolan Ninetales does take out the Empoleon, and that is a good game. Hopping in the next match, we have Defense Deoxys into Metacham. This is a pretty good lead for us. The very nice thing about this lead is they can only hit us for Ice Punch for neutral, which is their non-stab charge move and is a pretty weak one at that, whereas we can fire back with Thunderbolt, which is honestly a lot better of a move than Ice Punch. They're going for the Ice Punch, that does not do a whole lot, and now we bring in the Alolan Ninetales and we bait out Bastiodon. I am absolutely terrified that this is Metacham double tank, because if it is, then this is probably just game over. We do land the Dazzling Gleam, but that does absolutely nothing to Bastiodon. And I do see that this is actually an under-leveled XL Bastiodon, so it's in the 1300s, but it does appear to be XL'd. Now we're going to bring in Defense Deoxys, and they are going to be able to get off the Stone Edge here. Stone Edge will do a chunk of damage to us, and now we're building up to the Thunderbolt. Looks like they may have had a little bit of lag there on the side of the Bastiodon. We're going for the Thunderbolt to secure the KO. And yep, it does look like there is a little bit of lag there. Thunderbolt does take out the Basti, and we'll have to see what they have in the back. Do they bring back in the Metacham? They bring in Sableye. So we may have a chance in this match as Noctowl does have a pretty good matchup against Metacham and Sableye. Here, I am gonna start shielding. Ice Punch will hit us for super effective damage. And let's see if we can try and farm down. I think if we can farm down, we may have a chance to pull this off. Knockdown farming, able to farm down, and we leave with a ton of energy, but we are at a zero to two shield deficit, so this will be very tough sledding for us. Again, farming up, we do have a lot of energy. If this is the return, this is going to hurt. It's the return, but Noctowl survives. And again, we double resist the Shadow Claw, so they're gonna have a tough time farming us down. Able to get the shield. We're going for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball does do slightly more than the Sky Attack. Going for the Shadow Ball. Doesn't quite KO. We switch back in the defense Deoxys and they're forced to throw. Now the question is, can we survive a Shadow Claw on Noctowl? Noctowl lives on one HP. And despite a terrible mid game, we're able to barely sneak out a win. Hopping into the next match, defense Deoxys into Swampert. Again, we're going straight for the Psycho Boost, doing a nice chunk of chip damage or getting the shield. And now we bail into the Alolan Ninetales and we're met with another Drapion. I do have to be slightly worried here because the last time we saw this team, there was a Talonflame in the back and Talonflame ran absolutely roughshod over the rest of my team. Again, they call it back-to-back -back Drapions calling that it's not the Dazzling Gleam. So we've got some brave Drapions out here. They do shield. Here, I'm expecting them to try and throw on CMP. And by doing so, I'm actually gonna not throw my charge move and go for the extra so we can sneak. And now I am gonna over farm, which I didn't do in that first game. So we'll leave with more energy in case it is the Talonflame. Swampert comes back in and they throw. Very nicely done by the Swampert. They go for the Sludge Wave. That is a definite KO. And now this is a little tough. The question is, what do they have in back? And they have Frostlass. And Frostlass is an absolute nightmare for my remaining Pokemon. We go for the Psycho Boost. That does get the shield, but man, this is going to be rough. Shadow Ball plus a Powder Snow takes us out. And from here, Noctowl is very bulky, but 
Frostlass hits like a truck. Avalanche comes through. We do survive it barely, and we did get to the Shadow Ball, but I needed energy to take out the Swampert. So my only win con was to go for the Sky Attack, hope it killed, and then win the race. Unfortunately, not quite able to do so. Hopping into the next match against a Mag Cargo lead. So bringing out the Season 10 Spice, you'll love to see it. The Azumarill save switch is tough for this team. We're going for the Thunderbolt, we get the shield, and now I'm gonna bring in the Powder Snow Alolan Ninetales, as unfortunately my backline is really weak to Mag Cargo, but at least Noctowl can hit back with the Shadow Ball, whereas the Ninetales is an absolute sitting duck. So I'm gonna bring in the Ninetales, they shield, and it looks like they're making a play for Switch. This is really not good for me. We unfortunately are only able to get to the Weather Ball, and even though we have a 2-0 shield advantage, we have lost Switch, which means my Noctowl will be aligned with the Mag Cargo in the end game. They go for the Hydro Pump, and we correctly shield it. That is a big shield, and now I'm gonna shield up, double shielding, and I'm gonna over farm a significant amount because I will need to land probably two Shadow Balls onto the Mag Cargo, if at all possible. We're farming, unfortunately can't quite farm down before they would get to a move. We'll go for the Sky Attack, and now we'll wait for the Mag Cargo. Mag Cargo comes in, they do get an Incinerate through. Going for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball doesn't do a whole lot. We bring in Deoxys, we're able to get some counter damage, and they have Air Slash Tropius in the back. I don't wanna lower my attack just yet, so we're going for the Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt, unfortunately, does not do a whole lot here. It's only neutral, whereas Rock Slide would be super effective, and they go for the Leaf Blade. And this will be a little tough. We're farming up, and unfortunately, I play to the CMP tie, and of course, Defense Deoxys loses CMP. But I do have a win con. If Knocked Owl can farm down, then maybe we have a chance. They go for the Aerial Ace there. They switch in Mag Cargo, and now we're going for the Shadow Ball. We need this to KO. Shadow Ball just does not. The Mag Cargo overtaps, and we're able to take them out. Tropius comes back in. It's a race, and Knocked Owl able to get to the Sky Attack against all odds. Knocked Owl closing out the match. And that is a good game, my goodness. In conclusion, I had an absolute blast running Knocked Owl. Shadow Ball is a stronger base damage move than Psychic, the previous coverage move, which allows Knocked Owl to have a higher damage finishing move in the end game in neutral situations, as well as improved coverage versus Psychic, Ghost, and Steel. Knocked Owl's natural bulk, combined with the upgraded coverage, really does make it a threat in the Great League. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you, as always, to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is tremendously appreciated. Thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.